On Monday, Nvidia officially announced and showcased their 2000 series of graphics cards. This is a company that's already ahead of the competition. And now, here they are, taking another step forward. They claim that this is the greatest leap they've the made since 2006, and I won't contest that. But whereas I was very concerned for AMD before the presentation began, by the end I wasn't so worried. The GeForce 2000 series is a completely new design, optimised for ray tracing. This is the future of video game graphics. It's kind of the holy grail. Once this is reached, I'm not sure how, or even if, it could get better. So it's mightily impressive that Nvidia is showcasing it in real time with these graphics cards. But I don't think we're ready for it. Full, real-time, ray-traced showcases still seem to be at 20-ish frames a second and at a very limited resolution. I think, give it a few generations and a couple of die shrinks, we'll get there. But for now, we need to weigh ray-tracing up against the benefits that we'll be leaving behind. Today's games use tricks to mimic how light works. We can imitate radiosity, blurry shadows. We can use advanced shaders on materials to make them appear shiny or translucent. And whereas ray-tracing does all of these things better, I don't think it's worth a performance hit just yet. Using the tricks today's games are using, we can achieve 95% of the effect for a fraction of the performance hit. In the presentation, Nvidia used a number of examples in games of ray traced shadows and reflections. And although I can see the difference when it's pointed out, it would still take me a moment to realise why it was better. And if anything, it kind of made me more appreciative of how good we were at faking the effect before. For me, at least, the most noticeable thing about this kind of ray traced effect will probably be the frame rate drop. So really, Nvidia's greatest enemy is themselves. They, and everybody else in the video game industry, have spent decades developing stuff that looks good enough, simply because they know how demanding real ray tracing is. Eventually we'll do it all properly, I'm sure of it. It's just that, for now, I don't think it's worth the sacrifices required. And just as the 2000 series has had to fight against older graphics techniques, it also has to compete with the 1000 series, a generation of cards that were optimised to run existing graphics techniques. Which begs the question, how much faster will this new generation of cards be? Well, on top of the new technology, they also managed to cram more of their CUDA cores into the cards than ever before, so hopefully they won't be slower than the previous generation. By getting the number of these cores and by multiplying by their frequency, we get a rough estimate rough estimate of how powerful these cards will be. Kind of. And from this, the 2070? 2070? 2070 looks to be 16% faster than the 1070, the 2080 is 13% faster than the 1080, and the 2080 Ti is 90% faster than the 1080 Ti. I did find it interesting that the 2080 Ti is coming out with the rest. In past generations it's been reserved until later, but here, maybe it was required because the 2080 wasn't powerful enough to beat the older, last generation 1080 Ti. It wouldn't have looked good for Nvidia to have been beaten by their older cards, would it? And it wouldn't have given rich gamers a good reason to upgrade. So I have no doubt that the 2000 series will be faster in every way but I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't as much of a generational leap as we're used to from the company. Remember, this is a brand new architecture that's designed to render games in a new way. The fact that it can do this, whilst still shoehorning in enough horsepower to also be good at older methods, is mightily impressive in itself. But in the presentation, not once did they compare these cards to the older ones in proper game benchmarks. Not once. The closest we got was the Infiltrated Tech demo, running at 4K on the 1080 Ti at 30 frames a second, and what I assume is the 2080 Ti, running at 60 or above. But even this wasn't a fair comparison. They were using different anti-aliasing methods, and that was the focus of this comparison. We don't know how much of this frame rate difference is because the 2000 card is faster, or how much is because the older anti-aliasing technique is slower than their new AI-driven anti-aliasing. This is a case where what we're not told tells us more. It all reminded me of AMD's Vega previews. They did everything they could to avoid apples to apples comparisons with Nvidia's cards. They disguised a Vega Crossfire showcase as a Threadripper one. They hosted blind tests to show there wasn't a difference between how Vega and Nvidia cards felt. They tried to change the benchmarking from being about average FPS to being about minimums, and touted value for money on a computer-wide level, rather than it being about just the price of the graphics card. They did everything they could, other than to reveal the performance of the cards. Sound familiar? Yeah, I got the same feeling from Nvidia's presentation. Of course, they're not AMD and are already ahead, so they may not do the same things, but anybody watching the presentation would have picked up on something being off about the whole thing. He even explained how we needed to rethink how we benchmark cards, showing what goes into a Turing frame. And even then, he focused on the ray tracing element, rather than the bulk of what goes into powering today's games. Once again, this all sounds like he's trying to distance it from direct comparisons with older cards. The day after the presentation, TechRadar posted a 2080 Ti review, 
though I wouldn't call it that, since Nvidia chose exactly what they could and couldn't say. Let's take a look at the performance section, but with pedantic cynicism. Tomb Raider ran below 60fps with the new ray tracing features enabled. Could have been at 4K, but might have just been at 1080p. Multiple games ran at 4K 60fps, and at least one in excess of 100fps at 4K. Of all this information, the last bit probably reveals the most. The only new and upcoming game that I can imagine running at 100fps would be Doom Eternal. The original Doom, running on the 1080 Ti and with really pretty anti-aliasing, reached 98fps. So if the 2080 Ti is a bit more powerful, Doom Eternal is a bit more demanding, and they switched the anti-aliasing to Nvidia's new technique to reduce the overhead, yeah, the 2080 Ti is on track to be like the 1000 series, but a bit better. And I got the feeling from the article that we should expect power consumption to be noticeably higher as well. I mean, with so much crammed into one card, something's got to give, right? Nvidia's marketing the 2000 series as having superior image quality, as though that's its main selling point. But I wouldn't rule out it being faster as well. It's just that this won't be achieved using the traditional brute force methods, but rather through clever use of artificial intelligence. The Infiltrator demo was used to show it running anti-aliasing with less of a performance impact, but I wonder if this is just the start of what it can achieve. I wonder if artificial intelligence could be used to achieve something like checkerboard rendering, used to intelligently upscale games to make them appear as though they're running on a higher resolution than they actually are. Suddenly, it doesn't matter so much if ray tracing can only be run at 1080p, if AI can then be used to upscale and to bear the burden of anti-aliasing. I think they did the right thing with the 2000 series. I'm more excited about this new approach than if it was just about being faster than the generation before it. Ray tracing is looming on the horizon. It makes sense that, while they're ahead of AMD, they can get the teething problems with ray tracing out of the way, to develop hardware and software that's optimised for it, and then just to sit back and to wait for Moore's Law to carry them the rest of the way. It's just that early adopters of this technology won't get to experience it without the compromises and limited support that is to be expected from something this new and revolutionary. And although this is the greatest leap from Nvidia in a long time, why aren't I so worried about AMD? In the long term, I am concerned, maybe even more so. AMD doesn't just have to catch up in terms of performance, but also to develop their own ray tracing optimised hardware and deep learning algorithms in order to compete. That's a lot of work that Nvidia has already done and can build upon. Nvidia's market dominance means that where they go, AMD must also follow, and the RTX series may force AMD's graphics division to re-evaluate what they hope to achieve with their next, next gen cards. But at least they have time. Time before ray tracing, even limited versions of the tech, becomes a standard, or even desirable, feature in games. It's still early days, but it sounds like, even with the most powerful 2080 Ti, Battlefield and Tomb Raider struggle to reach 60fps at 1080p, even with just a few ray traced features. Unless AI can be used to artificially increase either the resolution or the frame rate, I don't see ray traced features being widely adopted in games or by gamers for a number of years, and even then, I suspect many won't find the frame rate impact worth it. Nvidia has taken a risky gamble with their 2000 series, burdening themselves with the difficult job of making ray tracing appealing and in getting it supported in upcoming games. All the while, this buys AMD time to catch up in terms of performance, and from what I've heard, this ray tracing tech is part of DirectX 12 so it's not like a traditional Gameworks feature that would lock AMD out of the market. It's free for all, and if AMD does a good enough job, then they might even find a superior way of doing it. But that's a lot of ifs. For now, Nvidia holds all of the cards, and I'm happy that they're continuing to innovate and to push forward without the hint of stagnation that we saw from Intel in the CPU market. Prices are higher than ever before, but then, not since Polaris have they been reasonable. I'd say wait for benchmarks. I have only covered gaming in this video, and in that regard, I feel the 2000 series, and its pricing, gives AMD a fighting chance to get back in the race. But let's be honest here, Nvidia's new Turing architecture is about a lot more than just gaming. Ray tracing is a huge deal to anybody working in 3D design, but in my opinion, there's even more potential with AI. It's justified in a gaming card to help speed up ray tracing and to improve anti-aliasing, but that's just the start of what it can do. Honestly, the sky's the limit, and I really see Turing as being Nvidia's next step towards world domination.